One of my passions is bad and obscure cinema, especially in the sci-fi and horror genres. And since it appears that one of your passions is list-type articles and videos, hey, I'm only too happy to oblige. So this time around, we're going to talk about some movies that you probably missed, but should definitely go out and watch ASAP. So here, in no particular order, what the heck, let's do it in chronological order, are my 10 favorite utterly underrated but truly fabulous sci-fi and horror movies. Huh. Wow. Thank you. Have you ever met a horror fan who doesn't love Vincent Price? How wrong, how terribly wrong. Nope, <laughs> me either. He has had so many amazing movies over the course of his career, but one that I feel always kind of falls through the cracks is 1959's The Tingler. Now this is just good, schlocky sci-fi horror. Uh, Price is at his cheesy best in a surprisingly nuanced role as a man straddling the line between dedicated physician and villainous mad scientist. The movie employed a number of gimmicks that should have made it more memorable, including one color scene and a truly weird attempt at breaking the fourth wall, although that was designed for viewing in a theater, not so much at home. Nevertheless, this should be a staple of everyone's Halloween viewing, at least. If you love black and white horror films, but you're getting tired of Dracula, Frankenstein, and Night of the Living Dead, try something different and check out The Tingler. Now, if you know classic horror and classic sci-fi, then you know the name Peter Cushing. He is well known for his many horror film roles, as well as his appearance as Grand Moff Tarkin in the original Star Wars movie. The Beast Must Die is not one of his better known films, but I really feel that it's a lot better, or at least a lot more memorable, than its reputation would suggest. Uh, it's a werewolf movie, but it's also uh, like a mystery whodunit in the vein of Agatha Christie. The protagonist is cool, the suspects are uniformly weird, especially this guy. And it had a unique little gimmick called the werewolf break, which reminded viewers of who the chief suspects were and gave them 30 seconds to formally make their guess as to who the werewolf really is. Now this is a movie that I saw on TV when I was probably about five years old, and honestly it was the werewolf break that kept it alive in my memory for the next 30 years until I could finally track down a copy and convince myself that no, I did not just imagine this. But gimmick aside, it's still a wonderfully claustrophobic horror tale with some really good twists and turns. Now this one is not to be confused with Thirst, which was a desert survival movie from 2010, or The Thirst, which is a vampire film from 2006. Now the one I'm talking about is an Australian, not quite vampire, not quite science fiction movie from 1979. Now much like the previous entry, uh, its inclusion on this list does require a little bit of backstory. Oh my god, who the hell cares? Now way back in 1982 or 83, when I was about three or four years old, I happened to wake up one night in the middle of the night and I wandered out into the living room. And my mom was up and she was watching this movie on TV. Now for whatever reason, she let me sit up and watch the rest of the movie with her, and it made a lasting impression. This may actually have been the catalyst for my lifelong love of bad horror movies. Now, being only three or four, my memories of that time are suspect and unreliable. I didn't know the name of the movie, and I only had clear recollections of two scenes. For 35 years, I couldn't even be sure that the movie existed at all, or if it was part of some random, mostly forgotten dream. But thank you internet, and specifically the Facebook group Extreme Halloween. I described the scanty details that I remembered, and within 30 minutes, a fellow member pinpointed it for me. 
I can't tell you what a colossal weight off my brain that was. And when I found the DVD on eBay and finally watched it late one night, just like that night all those years ago, and no, I did not let my son watch it with me. He's just gonna have to wait until he's three or four like everybody else. It was almost like Nirvana. Now I expected this movie to be bad, you know, something I'd watch once for nostalgia's sake and then you know, put it up on the shelf to collect dust. But I was actually pleasantly surprised. This movie isn't great, but it's actually pretty good, and it definitely deserves to be remembered. I will certainly be watching it again. Yes, we all know and love Elvira for her huge impact on the horror movie genre. As the hostess with the mostess, her legendary stint introducing and lampooning trashy horror films is beloved by horror fans of all ages. But surprisingly, not many people remember that she had her own trashy horror film, one that was definitely worthy of appearing on her own show, although I'm not sure if that would cause a feedback loop capable of destroying the space-time continuum. Whatever the case, if you haven't already seen Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, then immediately pause this video, go out, and watch Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Go on, get! Or, you know, watch it after this video. Uh, there's still plenty more to see here, and Elvira ain't going anywhere. I stumbled upon 1989's Arena while I was flipping through the channels one day. And after watching it for a few minutes, I knew that I was either watching one of the worst movies I'd ever seen, or one of the best. Now I quickly decided on the latter. Arena is awesome. Much like the Star Trek episode of the same name, the fight scenes between aliens in bulky rubber suits are endlessly entertaining. Sci-fi aficionados will recognize some familiar faces, mostly from Babylon 5 and Deep Space Nine. So suspend your disbelief and open a bottle of wine to pair with the cheesy costumes, sets, and special effects. <laughs> Where to even begin with this one? It's metaphysical, it's weird, it's borderline blasphemous in places, uh, it's got Tom Waits. If you're not sold already, I don't know what else to tell you. Oh, it's got some great songs by Gogol Bordello. This quiet little film is kind of a staple of indie film channels, and yet very few people I know have seen it, so I try to correct that every chance that I get. It's basically a fantasy, and it's about the afterlife for people who have committed suicide, so it's gloomy enough to appeal to horror buffs as well. It has a little something for everyone, and I just love it. That's all I can say. And if you're watching this video, I think you will too. I'm sure you're all really tired of my personal anecdotes by now. But I can't talk about this movie and not mention this little bit of personal trivia. This is one of my all-time favorite movies, but it's a Spanish-language science fiction movie with a cast of four people and zero special effects. It did not get a wide American release, and so for years, no one I knew had ever even heard of this movie, let alone seen it. Well, on my first date with the woman who is now my wife, we were talking about our favorite movies, and I mentioned this one. Well, guess what? Not only had she seen it, she loved it. Now, I'm not saying that that was the reason why I married her, but it sure as hell didn't hurt. So this movie had the power to bring two people together. And later on, we ended up creating a new life. So yeah, technically this movie has changed the world by contributing to the relationship that brought this little guy into being. <laughs> but still, that probably means nothing to you. So let me entice you further by telling you what you will get out of this. This is a time travel story, and typically those frustrate me because it is just so difficult for filmmakers to keep all of the loose ends straight. But this movie does so absolutely perfectly. Cause, effect, and consequences are all tied so seamlessly that if you go back and re-watch this movie, 
you'll see so many hints of things to come that you missed the first time and your mind will be blown. And it's all done with just enough black humor to really keep the viewer engaged and entertained. Basically, the protagonist has just about the worst day imaginable, and it is hilarious to watch it go from bad to worse. I know a lot of people are turned off by subtitles, but seriously. Suck it up, buttercup. This movie is well worth the minor inconvenience of actually having to read a little bit. After all these years, it's still one of my favorites, and if you give it a chance, I think it'll become one of yours too. Okay, I am really hesitant to even mention this next one because it is extremely graphic and adult in nature. So please don't bombard me with complaints about how I directed you towards porn because I am giving you fair warning now. Warning, bad biology is disgusting and due to its content should only be viewed by those trained in hazmat procedures. Ugh, why do I feel like all I'm doing is giving you more incentive to watch this? Honestly, I am trying to seriously warn you that this movie is graphic, but if you can get past the almost non-stop gratuitous sex scenes, I guarantee you've never seen a horror movie like this before. It's underrated, but it's also really, really bad, which is also what makes it good. I don't want to spoil it, but I do want to give you uh, at least a brief heads up of the plot, at least as much as my in-house sensors will let me get away with. So here goes. It's about a woman who has nymphomania because she was born with a mutant Now she hears rumors about a guy who was born with a mutant and she scours the city searching for him because he is the only person who might be able to understand her. Now over the course of the movie, she has while he has to deal with his increasingly sentient, drug-addicted Unfortunately, his eventually breaks free of him and goes on a rampage along the way. When they finally meet, he's attempting to destroy the but instead she and it ends up That's disgusting. Yeah. And no, I'm not showing you any clips. I doubt there's even 30 seconds of this movie I could show anyway. This one seems to have slipped by most people unnoticed, which is really a shame. It's really a slick little movie about one of the most intriguing monsters of modern times. Slender Man. Although he's never referred to as such anywhere in the movie. His appearances are few and brief, but jarring when they do occur. This is just a fun, atmospheric film that stands well enough on its own, but what you really need to know is that it's part of a franchise and a much larger mythos. If the title of the film was confusing to you, it's because Always Watching is actually a film sequel to a web series right here on YouTube called Marble Hornets, which follows a group of amateur film students and the nightmarish turn their lives take after they encounter the mysterious and malevolent operator. The entire series clocks in at just under nine hours, but let's face it, you've done marathons of the Star Wars trilogy, the original trilogy, the only one that matters, and Lord of the Rings, so binging on nine hours of authentically creepy amateur filmmaking really isn't a huge chore. I assure you, it is well worth it. And while the professional Hollywood movie is good, I really do believe that four kids running around central Alabama with a camcorder did it much, much better. You will have your nose pressed against the screen, just aching for the operator's next horrifying appearance. H.P. Lovecraft, this guy, right here, truly mastered the bizarre horror genre way back in the 1920s and 30s, but film adaptations of his stories have been disappointing to say the least. How can you teach such dribble? These people are here to learn and you're closing their minds before they even have a chance. Who's going to believe a talking head? Get a job and a side show. Yes, except for Reanimator. Exception duly noted. Although in my defense, I do try not to just be a talking head. Okay, not the best example. But while The Void isn't actually an adaptation of a Lovecraft story, it comes pretty damn close. The creature designs, the weird cultists, and that all-pervasive sense that mankind stands on the precipice of something that he not only cannot understand, but absolutely should not understand, are all classic Lovecraft tropes. 
One of the many things I like about this movie is that it uses practical effects rather than CG. So even though this movie was made in 2016, it really harkens back to the fun and the joy of 80s horror movies. Alright, that's my list. As I said, it's in chronological order, not in order of preference. It's just 10 films and one web series, all amazing in their own ways and well worth your time to check out. As with all top 10 lists, I'm sure you'll each have your own opinion about which movies didn't belong on this list, or which movies I didn't include that I should have. Well, that's what that comment button is for. And while you're down there, don't forget his neighbors, like and subscribe. Now go on, go find yourself some bad movies to watch. We'll see you next time.